Good morning to all of you. I just want to talk to you today about taking one day at a time in the Lord. This can be a very trite saying. Someone says, take one day at a time. But when the things of life are becoming overwhelming to you, we need to cry out to the Lord for help just to get through it. We can have this, we can have that. They seem to overlap. Some things are very important. We need to pull aside and to plan and to scheme. These are the times when we really, really need to take one day at a time and one item at a time. I had a job in which I developed, had developed, this was long ago too, before I followed the Lord as closely, but I used to say one crisis at a time. Because no matter what came along, I mean, if management was conveying the message, message to me about what needed to be done, it was always a crisis and it should have been done yesterday, you know, it's something like that. And so I used to just smile and just say one crisis at a time. I'll decide in the Lord what is most important and when to do it. I mean, that's just the way it had to be done because we are only you know, very limited and flawed human beings. And so I just encourage you in Christ to take one day at a time. My wife and I have been brought to a place where I really needed to lean on the Lord like that because the things we were facing were somewhat overwhelming. And the temptation was just to go out, to just do, do, do. But instead, I need to pray and wait on the Lord. So one thing you can do for taking a day at a time is itemizing. You know, trying to itemize what needs to be done, uh, what is most important, what needs to be done when. Maybe one thing depends upon another. Maybe something that needs to be done is rather simple and you can take care of it quickly and spend more time on those things that need consideration. Now for this all, we need God's wisdom. So we need to spend some deep time in prayer. Uh, the Bible says in Colossians that in Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So we want to go to him. And in James, it tells us that if we lack wisdom, we can just seek the Lord and he will give us what we need. He wants us to come to him and to trust in him. But we need to pull aside and pray. And this involves something that's a, a very true and good principle, and that is waiting on the Lord. When we come to the Lord in prayer, we need something or we need his, his direction. You see, as Christians, we want to do things God's way, don't we? And so sometimes this takes a lot of a lot of wisdom. Well, if I do this, it's going to be bad. But if I respond to the to this in this other way, somebody might be offended or hurt. I mean, the situations are just too numerous. Uh, and so we we have to go to the Lord and wait for him, wait for him to show us which way to go. The Bible gives us wonderful promises about waiting in the Lord. And the result of this, George Mueller, a uh, saint from the 19th century, was just famous for this, about seeking the Lord. Some things I saw, he, he waited seven months seeking for whether he should go ahead with the buildings of orphan houses two and three. He wanted to know if God really wanted him to do it. He wouldn't even tell his wife. He was, he was so secretive in prayer, but waiting on God. And this is what we, what we need to do more than anything. I have found that as a rule of thumb, when things seem very desperate, like there is urgent action and we have to take it right this minute, you know, like the car salesman, oh boy, you know, I have five other people waiting for this car, you know, they're talking about it. If you don't take it now, you won't get it. These are the times we need to pull back, seek the Lord and trust him. And remember, he said, if we commit our way to him, he will establish our thoughts. Please remember to look at uh, scriptures in the in the description below uh, to get a better view of this so you can read the word for yourself and meditate on it. And so we need to surrender to God's will. Again, as we look at these at these crisis points and we say, what's going to happen? What do I need to do today? What do I need to do tomorrow? Remember our the wisdom from James again just says that we don't know what will be tomorrow. Our life is but a vapor. If we live if the Lord has it for us to go and to do this or that, we shall. But if not, God's will be done. That's the rejoicing of the Christian. And we can always remember that Jesus is faithful. Remember the scripture says that if we are faithless, yet he abides faithful, for he cannot deny himself. I'm touched by uh, when Jesus is giving the example of 
of how to pray. You know, his disciples said, Lord, how do we pray? How should we do this? And Luke eleven three, just a part of this, this is the simple verse. It says, give us day by day our daily bread. Do you believe that God will give you your daily bread? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Please, please, if things are seeming to overwhelm you, take one day at a time. Throw yourself on the Lord. He will give you wisdom and help you to see what needs to be done when and how. And he'll give you strength beyond your understanding. May God bless.